Timu. It's time for another Timu haul. A once little known Chinese app. Look what came in the mail! That has become ultra popular in just a matter of months. I'm gonna need y'all to stop ordering Timu sh by selling the most random items. Apparently I bought a bubble gun. For dirt cheap. All this stuff is $4. Its goal? Infiltrate the American consumer. And now I have $200 worth of stuff from China. So let's see what I got. It's poured millions into Super Bowl ads. Download the Timu app and shop like a billionaire. And gamified shopping with a literal wheel of fortune. It's meteoric rise, now threatening retail giants, including Amazon. It's a threat to everyone, including Amazon. Which, in contrast, has barely updated its website in a decade. This week on Tech Check, we dive into the app, taking the country by storm, Timu, and how it could be the Amazon killer. Timu has become the most downloaded shopping app in the United States. Timu seems to have come out of nowhere. It launched in the U.S. a little more than a year ago, but already estimates suggest 15% of American consumers shop on the app, with more than 56 million monthly users here in the U.S., and likely to generate $13 billion in gross merchandise value this year. They've come very quickly, as you said, zero to three billion GMV in just under a year. It has shot past other Chinese apps like Shein and TikTok and downloads, and has grown so quickly that even Amazon is starting to take notice. I'm sure you've seen this site, Timu, right? Uh, and they're, you know, it's not the only one, but offering ridiculously cheap uh, deals on things, is that perhaps an uh, Amazon competitor uh, in China that's rising up here? I see it in lots of marketplaces, including our own, where you've got Chinese sellers who used to, who are always manufacturing the products. They used to sell to American or European retailers. They'd sell it wholesale, and then they would repackage it and charge more to consumers here in the U.S., where now, where Chinese sellers have direct access to consumers, they're selling direct to consumers, and at a lower price for consumers. That might be because growth at Amazon has stalled. Sure, it's huge, the incumbent to battle against. Nearly three out of every four consumers have access to an Amazon membership right now. But that is also the lowest rate Amazon has seen since March of 2018. And in terms of the pace of growth, Timu far outshines Amazon with a very different take on online shopping that is more fun. It starts with the wheels, endless spinning to hit jackpot after jackpot, giving you different degrees of discounts like five free items or $200 in credits. But it doesn't end there. Timu also has actual games like Fishland and Farmland designed to keep you on the app. Look at all the fish food they gave me. Feed the fish, water the crops, and continue to rack up your discounts and your spending. It's similar to how TikTok has captured the American social media user. Keep them engaged for long enough to sell more ads or more products. American browsing with Chinese characteristics. Even when you take away the discounts, Amazon is being severely undercut on price alone. This is a Morgan Stanley analysis showing the difference in the exact same products. A portable washing machine on Amazon priced at $60. On Timu, a third of that, $21. The same watercolor paint set, $36 on Amazon versus $17.50 on Timu. Or take Walmart, a vacuum robot cleaner sold for $32. It's less than 17 bucks on Timu. So why the big disparity? Here's CNBC's Eunice Yoon on how Timu makes it all happen. Timu's bargain prices appeal to cost-conscious Americans. Right now, all of Yen's products on the site sell for under $60. He says Timu insists prices for his faux leather and fur jackets need to be lower than anywhere else, even China. Timu covers all his shipping to the U.S. and half in China. It handles his marketing on Twitter and Instagram and provides technology so he can easily swap out Chinese fashion models in his ads for Western ones. In contrast, Amazon often charges a fee to sell on its platform. It's able to because Amazon offers incredible reach, a huge platform, and it can take care of logistics, packaging, fast shipping, and most importantly, returns through its FBA or Fulfillment by Amazon service. For that privilege, it charges a fee or a percentage of every sale. It's a huge revenue driver, allowing the company to make money off of other retailer sales. And they charge them 30%. Uh, that's a huge margin to play with that Temu can, uh, can kind of eat away at if they start bringing them into the United States. Timu doesn't have that network, but so far consumers and merchants haven't seemed to mind. Consumers have been happy to spend less just by waiting a few more days. 
And that could mean that Amazon's biggest value proposition, the ultra fast delivery network that it has spent decades and billions of dollars building out, might not be the advantage it once was. Timu uh, can beat them significantly on price point, um, and Timu has already still you know, pioneered that fast fashion value chain, so they can take a drawing of a dress to delivering at your doorstep in seven days. Yeah, you know, that's a pretty good timeline as well. The rise of Timu could also threaten one of Amazon's newer, higher growth, higher margin businesses, advertising. Online advertising has in recent years become extremely lucrative for Amazon, bringing in more than $10 billion in sales in its latest quarter which means a retail giant has more to gain and more to lose by how much time shoppers spend on its website. More eyeballs for longer equals better ad proposition. But while the e-commerce experience has evolved on Timu for better or for worse, Amazon hasn't really changed its website in more than a decade. This is from October 2013, and this is October 2023. The prices blow my mind. You might recognize this commercial. It played twice during the Super Bowl this year. A $14 million spot from Timu that analysts say drove a 45% increase in downloads and a 20% increase in daily users. And that is just one small, tiny piece of its massive advertising spend. Goldman Sachs estimates Timu is investing some $2 billion into marketing this year, with the majority going to Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. But the pricey ads combined with Timu essentially giving away its products has made some ask whether its business model is all that sustainable. Timu has a secret weapon, parent company Pinduoduo, a Chinese e-commerce powerhouse. Pinduoduo was a company that went from zero to $30 billion valuation in about a year. It IPO just a year or two later. Um, it reached as high as $200 billion market cap. And when it launched a decade ago, it faced a similar argument. How could this startup compete with incumbents like Alibaba and JD.com, essentially the Amazon and Walmarts of China? Instead, Pinduoduo cut through with a similar model, extremely low prices. And although critics argued that was unsustainable, citing heavy losses, the startup ultimately proved them wrong, soon reaching the inflection point where it became profitable as sales compounded. Now, Pinduoduo is trying to replicate that with Timu here in America, and it has generated huge traction. One analyst writes that Pinduoduo provides experienced managers and financial support that allows Timu to prioritize customer acquisition over profitability. In other words, Pinduoduo has the executives, the supply chain, the fulfillment infrastructure, and most importantly, the cash to shoehorn Timu into success. The American people need the truth about the the threat TikTok poses to our national and personal security. The Chinese government has that data. I think that is a blatant display of how vulnerable people who use TikTok are. TikTok is the Chinese app that lawmakers have been fighting for the past year, but Timu may be the real Trojan horse. Regulators have been working on limiting TikTok's scope in a rare bipartisan push, with the White House endorsing the Senate's TikTok bill and banning some government employees from using it on work devices. Chinese bilateral tensions have also escalated as the Biden administration introduced new legislation that restricts the sale of semiconductor technology to China to prevent it from developing its own tech for military use or otherwise, all while Timu has been left to grow unfettered. It's another example of what has been a main criticism of regulators that they're fighting yesterday's battle. The question remains, will the American consumer stay with this app or will it be a passing fad? Timu's customer acquisition strategy relies on a costly, aggressive advertising campaign and social marketing. Y'all, Timu just sent me a package and guess how much I spent on it? Zero dollars. Once you place an order on Timu, you're inundated with promo emails, reminders about flash sales, and affiliate links to share on social media. It was funny at first, but now I am sick and tired of Timu. For the past two months, my For You page has been infiltrated by Timu ads. But at the end of the day, the goods that are sold on the platform are low cost, low quality. You pay for what you get. It would honestly be super cute if it wasn't like dirty and broken. Consumer reviews are mixed and some are taking to social media with their disappointment. I don't think I'm gonna be ordering from this place again. This website was so janky and so iffy. Other online reviews warn about the poor quality of the products offered from the marketplace, posting that a small electronic fan barely worked and metallic jewelry quickly tarnishes. It's not working anymore. 
And then there's the issue of knockoffs, an issue that also plagues Shein. The Better Business Bureau has a warning too. Timu has a customer rating of 2.6 stars out of five a C-plus rating, and the organization says it has closed over 1,000 customer complaints in the last year. So as a new generation of e-commerce players flood America, buyer and Amazon, beware.